Hello everyone and welcome back to digia.com, a platform where we make life simple for management students worldwide. In this video on the subject of service marketing, we are going to cover the topic on how to manage demand and supply in services. Every services goes through some fluctuation in demand and the issue of fixed capacity. This video fleshes out the strategies to manage demand and capacity in services. The video additionally also covers the examples of Singapore Airline and Vistara and how are they managing their demand and capacity. So now let's start with the topic on how to manage demand and supply in services. One of the major issues in services is that it cannot be stored or inventoried. This issue leads to temporary imbalances between the supply and demand of services. This supply-demand mismatch poses a difficult challenge for managers of service firms. At any given moment, a fixed capacity service may face one of the following four conditions. First, excess demand. The level of demand exceeds the maximum available capacity, with the result that some customers are denied service and business is lost. For example, there are 100 tables in a restaurant, so those 100 tables are known as supply, and there are 200 reservations, which has the demand in this case. Clearly, 100 tables versus 200 reservations is a complete mismatch, and in this case, excess demand. Taking the same example forward for other three situations. Situation number two, demand exceeds optimum capacity. In this case, no customer is turned away, However, given the excess demand, customers are likely to perceive deterioration in the quality of service. Again, in this scenario, there are 100 tables in a restaurant, so the supply is fixed, and there are about 125 reservations for the tables. Now, in this case, some customers have to wait, and there is strain on the kitchen and the serving staff. Moving on to situation number three, which is well balanced demand and supply. Now, this is the optimum level of capacity 100 tables in a restaurant and 100 reservations of the table, which is a perfect situation for the restaurant which is highly unlikely in certain scenarios. The fourth situation where demand is less. Demand is below the optimum capacity and productive resources are underutilized. Customers may even have doubts about the service. Example, 100 tables in a restaurant and 20 reservations for the tables. This result in a waste of resources and customers might judge the restaurant. Thus, an organization must take efforts to understand the demand patterns and its capacity constraints to effectively formulate strategies that can match demand and capacity. This will ultimately entail adjusting either the demand or the capacity. There are two ways an organization can deal with a demand supply mismatch. First, increase or decrease the capacity to match demand fluctuations, that is, you're managing your supply. Or the other one, shift the demand to meet the capacity, in this case, you're managing the demand. Now, before we jump onto these steps, let's look at some live examples of demand and capacity adjustment. First, Vistara, a premier airline joint venture between Singapore Airlines and Tata Sun, was launched on January 9, 2015. Vistara initially struggled to fill its planes, resisting a load factor of only 50-60% to 60 for most of the year. In response to this, Vistara reduced its front end of the cabin, reducing its business class seats to 8 and reducing its premium economy seats by 3rd to 24. This helped the airline increase its economy class seats by 30% to 126 seats. Further, Vistar announced a 30% discount on its business class seats. Now, by playing around by the number of seats available in the business class, premium economy and economy, here Vistara was trying to manage the supply that it is offering. Moving on to the next example of Singapore Airlines and Malaysian Airlines partnership. The Singapore Airlines and Malaysia Airlines have been granted conditional approval for a partnership as stated by the Competition and Consumer Commission of Singapore. The agreement entails both airlines working together in areas such as revenue sharing, joint sales and marketing. This will ultimately help them grow traffic between two countries and to other markets within Europe. Under the code share agreement, both airlines can sell seats on each other's flights. This will ultimately benefit passengers with a wider choice of end destination. This ultimately means that they get to widen their capacity or managing their supply of seats. Moving on, let's look at strategies for managing capacity to match demand. In short, we are managing supply. First, customers involvement. By converting certain operations to self-service like buffets and restaurants and fast food joints, the firms can divert its own personnel to other functions. Self-service firms lose a certain measure of control on over service quality when the customers are asked to perform key function. Next, using part-time employees. Part-timers can help supplement regular employees when the peak of activity are persistent and predictable. A ready part-time labor is available from college students and others who are interested in supplementing their primary source of income, or summer jobs or internship jobs. Next, cross-training employees. At times when one operation is busy, the other operation may be idle. 
cross training employees do the task in various operations creates flexible capacity to meet demand fourth modify or move facilities and equipments sometimes it may be possible to modify the existing capacity to meet the demand fluctuation for example the new boeing 777 aircraft is so flexible that it can be reconfigured to accommodate extra number of seats allocated to one two or three classes thus the plane can be quickly modified to match the demand arising from different market segments as we saw in the case of vistara next sharing capacity a large investment in equipment and facilities exists in a service delivery system at the time of under utilization it may be possible to find other use of the capacity next stretching existing capacity in order to match the demand the existing capacity of service resources can be expanded under such circumstances no no resources are added but people facilities and equipment are asked to work harder this is usually in the case on weekends at night clubs and lounges but the same number of employees are asked to attend to a maximum number of guests and finally schedule downtime and maintenance during low demand if during the peak period people equipment and facilities are being used at maximum capacity then it is necessary to conduct repairs maintenance and renovations during off period and finally strategies for managing demand to match capacity first partition the demand the demand for services is often grouped into random arrivals and planned arrivals for example at a doctor's clinic the walk in patients arriving are more than those of the appointments thus appointments can be controlled but walk in demand is uncontrollable we often find the inflow of patient is higher on weekdays than weekend therefore in order to level a demand a partition can be created to keep appointments in the latter part of the week that is weekends and only walk in patients on weekdays next vary the service offering depending on the season of the year day of the week or time of the day we can change the nature of the service offering for example accounting firms focus on tax preparations and general activities late in the year and until april when the taxes are due during the other times of the year they can focus on auditing and other general counseling activities third developing complementary services complementary services are basically offered in order to occupy waiting customers the restaurants have discovered the benefit of complementary services by adding a bar to the restaurant the customers can enjoy food and drinks separately as well as together number 4 promoting off peak demand During off seasons holiday resorts use the premises as a retreat location for business or professional groups this ensures that the fixed capacity doesn't stay idle next pricing incentives in order to smooth the demand on the service processes prices can be raised during peak times and lower at non peak times movie halls and morning shows and hotels offer lower rates during weekends and finally communicate with the customer if everything else fails another way for shifting the demand is communicate with the customer let them know the peak demand period so that they can choose to use the service at alternative times and avoid crowding finally strategies when demand and capacity cannot be matched first reservations and appointments next triage as an emergency first third waiting lines and finally delaying the service delivery so that's it folks this brings an end to the topic on how to manage demand and supply in services These are the list of sources and links referred to for the content in the video. Thank you.